Alright, alright, welcome back to the channel, y'all. Time for another breakdown analysis. You know, I've said it once, I've said it many times. My reactions to these uh, tracks isn't about, yeah, that's hot. It's about, like, uh, literary, uh, artistic, and sometimes even a philosophical breakdown of these tracks. Right now, the whole Kendrick and uh, Drake shit is popping off. You know, this is not that. So today I'm breaking down slash analyzing Nas's uh, sitting with my thoughts off the album Magic 3. The video for that came out maybe like three, four weeks ago now. And I love that they incorporated the video with Nas and Wu-Tang on tour. That was so dope. You know, I mean, Nas is my favorite rapper. You know, I, from what I can see from the outside, Nas is a stand-up guy. You know, I'm not looking at Nas as Mr. Morality or whatever, but this track is like a real inspirational track, especially to somebody like me. You know, right now I'm going through a lot of struggles, but you know what I'm saying? I'm hanging in there, I'm persevering, you know? So I, I like a lot of Nas's work, and over my lifetime, a lot of Nas's work has been real inspiration to me, my life, my journey, my profession, my education, you know what I'm saying? So sitting with my thoughts, you know, this is not uh, getting into the whole Kendrick and Drake shit, but anyway, let's get into the track, man. This is one of my favorite tracks off the album. It's, uh, it's not like one of the most complicated tracks lyrically, but... It, it's got a message behind it, like, yo, fam, no matter what adversities hit you, you know what I mean, you can overcome it. And it, it's a real short track, it's inspirational, and this is what you, what I love about some of the greats, like, nah, sometimes you might get this sick beat, and everything ain't gotta be lyrical, miracle, rappy, rap, rap, over it. Sometimes you can say... Like, just simple words, phrases, stanzas, whatever, and let the beat ride and let the beat do a lot of the work. But, yeah, this is one of my favorite tracks off the album, so let's get into it. To OGs and young bosses, we bounce back when we take losses. Hey, hey. We gonna lose shit like this, my nigga. I once too was a young boy wildin' on tour, running with some of the wildest youngers out of New York. Met some more in Baton Rouge, used to wild how they talk. 19, my girl was pregnant, had to sit with my thoughts. Sit with my thoughts. I had to sit with my thoughts. My family was my motivation, focus on the elevation. I'm attracted, not chasing. We ain't scared of niggas, we rare the niggas. Broke chain hands, diamonds independent. I am independent, she wrote a comedy pendant. It got Woo! to right there, right there, right there, fam. Like right there, man. Let let's let's go back. Just the way the track started off, you know what I'm saying? A hit. You know what I mean? I love that drop right there, man. And uh again, Nas is one of my favorites. He's like the greatest reminisce rapper of all times, man. You know, so he's like 19, my girl was pregnant, had to sit with my thoughts. You know what I mean? He's reminiscing back to his early days, you know, like 17 to 20 years old. You know, he's getting in the game. He's running with some of the wildest young bucks in New York, you know, running around, doing their little dirt. But this one even like calls back to one of Nas's early tracks. And I can't remember what track it is. I'm sure if y'all remember, drop it in the comments uh, when he was like, you know, my baby girl came and was a, a, an ease to my adolescence brain. You know what I mean? And then at the same time, Nas is bigging up the OGs that he's uh, crossed paths with that's made him the man today. So right off the bat, I kind of love the way this track starts. And he's like, my family was my motivation. Focus on elevation. I'm attracting not chasing, you know what I mean? At this point in Nas's career, he ain't got to chase the limelight, the fame, the money, because he got all that, you know what I mean? And as a figure of speech, that part, my family was my motivation, focus on elevation. As a, as a figure of speech, as a literary device, this is almost like an alliteration. It's the, the repetition of those constant sounds 
you know, that makes it an, an alliteration, motivation, elevation, attracting, not chasing. And, and it also has like an element of like an end rhyme uh, element in terms of like, you know, a, a literary tool or a literary device or a part of a poem. You know what I mean? So this is just masterful writing, fam. I love this. Let's back up just a little bit. Love this track. My thoughts. My family was my motivation. Focus on the elevation. I'm attracted, not chasing. We ain't scared of niggas. We rare the niggas. Broke chain, hand, diamonds, independent. I am independent. She wrote a comedy pendant. It got to my attention. We could go viral in minutes. Aspire to win it. I'm spiraling in it. Flip. Right off the bat, let's pause it, fam. I know I said this was like one of the simpler lyrical tracks on the album, but I love this song so much that I just get like a vibe, you know what I'm saying? I just get amped every time I'm listening to this. So he's like, we ain't scared of niggas, we rarer than niggas. You know what I mean? You can. That's like a callback to uh, King's Disease 2, I'm in rare form, you know what I mean? Uh, he's like, rope, chain hang. Diamonds independent, the pendant on the chain, I'm independent. This is such a dope bar, man. Uh, this is such a dope bar. He's like, he's using one bar to set up the next bar. And as a literary tool or a literary device, you know, or, or an academic uh, study or synthesis of this bar, you know, you can say this is like almost on the side of... Uh, personification no nah, it's not a personification it's 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 almost like a metaphor diamonds independent i am no it's 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 an it's a i'd say it's a personification because he's like diamonds independent i am independent so he's a, assigning the characteristic of being independent to the diamonds that's independent of the chain this is just dope riding man this is just dope riding this is this is so ill. He wrote a comedy pendant. It got to my attention. We could go viral in minutes. Aspire to win it. I'm spotting him. Okay. I'm as independent. I am independent. She wrote a comedy elevation. I'm attracted, not chasing. We ain't scared of niggas. We rare than niggas. Broke chain hands. I'm as independent. I am independent. She wrote a comedy pendant. It got to my attention. We could go viral in minutes. Aspire to win it. I'm spiraling in it. Flip sides of the coin. That's life in the business. Flip publishing. It goes to the highest of bidders. I got a bidder. Low pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Because my boy Esco is just in a pocket on this track. Just flowing and just dropping knowledge. Jay, what you trying to drop? Knowledge. <laughs> just He's just in a dope pocket on this dope track, man. He's like, she wrote a comment. They pinned it. It got my attention. We can go viral in minute, in minutes. And this is just a, such a dope piece of storytelling slash poetry right there. She wrote a comment and they pinned it, got my attention. We can go viral in minutes. You know what I mean? And one of the things I admire about Nas, you know, and Nas is by far to me like way ahead of his contemporaries in linking current popular culture with popular culture of the past. You know what I'm saying? And in this pocket, he just like stitches it together so seamlessly. And the words don't even necessarily need, need to rhyme for him to use one bar to set up one bar. She wrote a comment, got my attention, we can go viral in minutes. But here he's just like, in such a pocket where he's like blending the old and the new because like back in the 90s and early 2000s like something going viral wasn't part of the vocabulary or the vernacular in popular culture you know what i'm saying and as a literary tool or a poetry term this bar is constructed in the format that we could we could describe as a slant rhyme a slant rhyme style and in, in an academic sense, a slant rhyme is usually a set of words that, like, not, don't necessarily rhyme, you know what I mean? They, 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 they might sound kind of similar, but they don't perfectly rhyme. This, you can also call this an approximate rhyme. You know, it's an imperfect rhyme. 
But right here, we're dealing with a master writer that's just in a pocket, that's just like constructing a story or a piece of poetry over this dope beat. You know what I mean? Aspire to win it. I'm spiraling in it. That's like the next line. And yo, yo, going back to a portion of the rhyme scheme as an academic term or an academic item, you could even say this is an assonance. And an assonance is a, a, a poetry term or a literary term, which is like repetition of the same vowel sounds in like short succession. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? He's hitting the same sounds like in a short, in a, in a short interval, almost like, bop, 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 bop. you know what I mean? Aspire to win it. I'm spiraling in it. You know what I mean? And that even goes back to, we can go viral in minutes. Aspire to win it. I'm spiraling in it. So it's the same, it's the same consonant, the I, the I, the I, the I, you know, viral, the I, R, aspire, the I, R, spiraling, the I, R. You know what I'm saying? So that, as a literary tool, is an assonance. Yeah, man, it's just pop, 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 just hitting you with the vowel sounds in that, like, short uh, span. But that is that is just dope writing, man. And even though this is one of the, lyrically, this is one of the simpler songs on the track, I love it. Sit with my thoughts. I had to sit with my thoughts. My family was my motivation, focus on the elevation, I'm attracted, not chasing. We ain't scared of niggas, we rare the niggas. Broke chain, hang, diamonds independent. I am independent, she wrote a comedy pendant. It got to my attention, we could go viral in minutes. Aspire to win it, I'm spiraling in it. Flip sides of the coin, that's life in the business. Flip publishing, it goes to the highest of bidders. I got them bitter, lows of a winner. That shit come with being great, there's a lot on my plate. Never broke again, I'm blacker than the NBA. ESPN couldn't cover all of my highlights. Look at this money machine. Pause it, fam, pause it, because I got to get into these bars right here. So after he hit you with the spiral in it, he's got flip sides of the coin, life in the business. Right here, Nas is getting into his grown man business, his grown man bag, talking his shit. You know what I'm saying? In this part of the track, the end rhyme scheme is impeccable against the, the, this beat, fam. Just riding the beat. You know, this rhyme comes at the end of each sentence, and it's a part of the structure of the bar scheme. You know what I mean? In this part, it's just like an end rhyme, which just perfectly mold this part of the track. Uh, he's like, you know what I'm saying? What, what does it say right here? It says, the bar scheme, the business, the hot, he's like, life in the business. And then he goes, and then it's the, 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 the end of the next line is, to the highest of bitters, business, bitters. Got him bitter, blow up of a winner. So it's just this uh, end bar scheme that just, just lead you from, from, from one line to the next. And the, 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 the dope part of this is like the first two lines in this little section, flip sides of the coin, that's life in the business. Flip publishing, so he used flip at the, at the start of each sentence, and then you have these uh, rhyming words, similar sounding but not exactly matching words at the end of each line. So flip business, flip bitters, and then the next line, he, he, he continues that same sort of uh, rhyming scheme, I got him bitter, blows up of a winner, you know what I mean? And then he goes back into that uh, repetition line, uh, that, that repetitive line, that shit comes with being great, a lot on my plate, you know what I'm saying? And that's just, that's just dope, man, that's just dope writing. And here Nas is saying when he said that what comes with being great, He's, he's, he's like, the message behind that bar, or at least as I interpret it, is that when you're great, you're always going to have to endure obstacles and a lot of hate when your hard work is starting to pay off. But people don't see that hard work. They're only seeing the, 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 the glitz, the glamour, the, the, the shiny payoff that you're getting. You, you're getting at the end of that and not really having a backstory as to all the struggles you endure, you know what I'm saying? So, so that's just dope, man. Never broke again, blacker than the NBA. That's just a dope, dope uh, 
part of the song right there. Filling in it, flip sides of the coin that's life in the business. Flip publishing, it goes to the highest of bidders. I got a bitter, lows of a winner. That should come with being great, there's a lot on my plate. Never broke again, I'm blacker than the NBA. ESPN couldn't cover all of my highlights. Look at this money machine, I love what it sound like. And if he would have loved that. Ooh, right there, man. He's like, never broke again. I'm black and at the NBA. My man is saying, like, even if ESPN ran for 30 years, they couldn't cover the, the, the heights and, you know, the great moments of his career. At this point, he's like a money machine. I, I'm telling you, man, my man Esco is like the quietest billionaire in the rap, man. Like, if you pay attention to Esco and his business moves and you do some rough math, you will quickly realize that Esco is, like, one of the quietest billionaire in hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not looking at Esco as, like, Mr. Morality or whatever, but this man is, he, he has so much money, but still, he's not out there being, like, the loudest you know, telling everybody how much he's got, fam. You know, I mean, Esco is the quietest billionaire in rap, man. And I, I just love this this part. It's like, it's braggadocio. It's talking his shit without, like, being belligerent, you know what I mean? Again, how many, how many simple rappers, I got money, I got bags of money, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, you gotta, like, come up with clever ways to, 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 to talk your shit and be like, you know, braggadocious, you know what I'm saying? With, to impress me, at least, fam. I don't know about the casual rap fan. But, like, dudes like Esco, man, like, his bars should be studied by college professors, you know what I mean? Like, there should be entire thesis projects written on some of Esco's work, man. That's just how ill, uh, uh, es ill a writer Nas is, fam. That I'm working with him, he might have took I got him bitter, lows of a winner That should come with being great, there's a lot on my plate Never broke again, I'm blacker than the NBA ESPN couldn't cover all of my highlights Look at this money machine, I love what it sound like And if he would have loved that I'm working with him He might have took me to 6 and turned me a crit It's all money in, XO in my cup, I'm sitting with my thoughts again Yeah To OGs and young bosses we bounce back when we take losses. I pray we all get prayed for. I pray we all can make more. The whole time writing this, I'm typing some people back who need me to get in the place of the type of shit. Right there, man. Even the hook for this is so simple, but it just conveys such like a crazy positive message, man. And, you know, with Nas, I've said it like so many times. In my book, is the greatest reminisce rapper of all time. He's always paying homage to, to people that's passed, even if he didn't see eye to eye with them. You know what I mean? I know he had a lot of respect for Nipsey, so, you know, he's shouting out Nipsey. You know what I mean? And Nas is always paying homage to other rappers, whether they're his contemporaries or they came before him. That's one of the things that I respect about Nas, because Nas has talked a lot of shit about him being the greatest rapper of all times. But if you're a good rapper, if you're a great rapper, and Nas respect you, he's always going to pay homage to you. You know what I mean? So that's what I love about Nas, man. He's always paying homage to rappers that came before him, his contemporaries, rappers that are coming after him. You know what I mean? And you, you've got to be somebody of like a certain character, you know what I mean? A certain moral standing to, to do that. Because we all know rap is competitive or whatever. Even with this Kendrick and Drake shit right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? One of the things Kendrick is exposing is Drake's lack of morality. But anyway, throw that to the side, son. You know what I'm saying? But Nas is, is, just, is just like in his bag right now on this dope ass beat. Let me go back just a tad. More. The whole time writing this, I'm typing some people back Who need me to get in the places, the type of shit is that I'm a concierge for most people I know I'm in the studio and hit cash out my folks, I love it That shit come with being great, there's a lot on my plate I'm Yeah, yeah, this part of the bar right here He's like, the whole time he's writing this rhyme 
He's typing people back. He's hitting his peoples with Cash App. You know what I mean? In this part of the ride, Nas is, he, he's laid out, like, all the work he's put in to make sure that all his peoples are good. You know what I mean? That everybody's eating. He's sending folks Cash App. You know what I mean? The flip side, and on the flip side, in this part of the, in this part of the song, he's also saying that, you know what I mean, like, some people want to use him, you know what I mean, that there's no loyalty, you know what I mean, like, where is the love, you know what I mean, he's like, he's questioning, like, yo, I'm, am I your concierge, dude, is, is that all I mean to you, so if you juxtapose this part, wait, and then he goes into the rhyme where he's like, that's the shit that's, uh, that's the shit that comes with being great. There's a lot on my plate. So if you, if you, you like, uh, compare this to the earlier part of the song when he used the same line, that the earlier part, he was like, he was like laying out like, yeah, you know, you've got to work hard to be great. But when he comes back, when he comes, when he arrives at this part of the track, he, and he does that line again, He's essentially juxtaposing that and he's like, yeah, I'm great and I have all this success, so now I got to get back. You know what I mean? That That's just dope, man. That's just dope. And here he's saying like examples of the work you put in, you get, and he's uh, talking about the life in business, you know, flipping publishing, that he's a winner, you know what I mean? So he's just juxtaposing the first part of the song when he said, uh, that's the shit that uh, comes with being great. In the first part of the song, he's struggling, he's putting in the hard work, he's in the gym shooting 100 three-pointers, and then here now, he's on the court, he's made that shot so many times, so it's easy, and you know, with this ease and him putting up numbers, he's making sure his people eat. So that that's just, that's just dope, man. And, uh, what 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 figure of speech is that? Uh, that's that's not coming to me right now. But uh, repetition, repetition, repetition. What's the yeah? Anomatopoeia, words imitate sound, double entendre, slant rhyme. But yeah, he's he's using a lot of repetition here, and I love it, man. Let's go. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But before I go on, like, that, that part where he says, like, that's the shit that comes with being great. There's a lot in my plate. Like, as, as an academic term or a literary term, that is literally called a lyric. That is literally a lyric. Like, if you go to any poetry book, that would be the definition of a lyric. You know what I mean? And, it's, and this is, uh, and uh, to clarify, a lyric is like a phrase or a sentence that expresses a personal emotion or thought from the first person that's narrating, you know, the first person account of the person that's telling you the story. So that's a lyric, you know what I mean? That lyric right there, that's, that's dope. I love it. And I love the repetition. I love the pocket. I love right where it's at. All right, here we go. I love it. That she come with being great is a lot on my plate. I would give it all away for a smile on their face. Shout out to rappers who inspired me in my beginnings. Who I inspired right back when they pick was dwindling. Sitting with my thoughts, thinking what it cost for peace of mind. I'd go crazy if I couldn't rhyme. I finally took time to drop constant releases. Pause it right there. Pause it right there. So again, Nas is just on his uh high horse, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, again, he's like, I'll give it all away just to see a smile on my people's face. And he's shouting out people that inspired him when he was uh, coming up. You know, in, in, in so many uh, different songs, Nas has bigged up like all the rappers that was from Queensbridge before his time. You know what I mean? Like MC Shan, I used to see Shan chilling by his Audi. You know what I mean? And that's, and even going back to last summer with the whole Hip Hop 50 shit when Shan was online wilding out, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not from Queensbridge, but being from Queens and just being such a fan of Nas's work and how much respect he's paid to these elder rappers, I couldn't understand where MC Shan was coming from, you know what I mean? Because 
when Nas put together that Queensbridge project back in the early 2000s, I can't remember if that was 2000 or 2001 or 2002, but you know, I was I was in my teens. I, I wasn't in college yet. I remember the bridge, the the bridge. You know, Shan was was on that track. Uh, I can't remember if he was in the video or not. So you know, being Nas, observing Nas from a distance, and Nas being a stand up guy, I'm sure if Shan was like lacking or needing, you know, what I mean, even if he didn't have Esco's number. He could have reached out to Esco, and I'm sure Esco would have helped him and wouldn't even make it public, wouldn't even make a big deal. Because, you know, unlike a Drake or a Jay-Z, who's got to make a big deal of everything they do to, to, to project, you know, a positive public image, Esco is one of the dudes who's just like so quiet about everything he do. You know what I mean? So that that's what was bugging me. With that whole Shan, that 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 Shan thing, fam. But anyway, let's get back into the run. Nas is always uh, paying homage and reminiscing, man. Take it what it cost for peace of mind. I go crazy if I couldn't rhyme. I finally took time to drop constant releases. I finally put me first. The intro on the sequence. Don't need a new assistant. I'm just too persistent. Officially efficient. I see it through to the finish. So complete. I'm not a control freak. Personal chef flow. I make sure that we all eat. Oh, geez, and young. oh man, that that part of the rhyme right there, that part of the track is is just so layered with so many literary devices and just master and just ill writing, man, just ill writing. You know what I mean? This is this is almost like a cross between it's almost a cross between like a a pun and an end rhyme. The way this sequence of the rhyme is set up because he's playing with similar sounding words at the end of uh, the end of uh, of these two lines, you know what I mean? He's like, finally took time to drop Constance releases. I finally put me first intro on the sequence or so releases sequence. So that's that 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 end rhyme that end rhyme literary device he's using right there. And then he goes into don't need an assistant. I'm just too persistent. Again, the end rhyme, you know what I'm saying? The end rhyme. And that's almost like a cross between a pun and an end rhyme with the sentence structure because he's, he's rhyming releases and sequence. Assistant and persistent. And then he goes to the next one. I definitely say that's an alliteration for the next one. Uh... Because the two words, they, they look different and they, but they sound very similar sound, right? Officially efficient. They're not perfectly wrong, but they sound very similar. And then he goes into, I'm not a control freak. You see what I'm saying? Officially efficient. I see things through to the finish. You know what I mean? And then... So complete. I'm not a control freak. So so that 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 right there is a really layered bar. You know what I'm saying. And again, if you're if you're looking to the philosophical meaning, Esco is uh, right here is saying that he ain't gotta be in control of everything in whatever venture he's pursuing. You know what I'm saying. I'm not a control freak. That's the Enron, and then each phrase. On each phrase he's writing, then he goes into a metaphor here. Uh, personal chef flow, make sure that we all eat. Yeah, that's definitely a metaphor. And here he's uh, he's he's uh, comparing. He he's got an uh, implied comparison between two things, right? So that a metaphor there, he's like chef. He's a personal chef, and then he's making sure that all his peoples eat behind the scenes. You know what I mean? This is this is so good, man. He's making sure his family's good. Like, as a layered message, like, if you're not thinking about the bars, you're going to miss a lot of these, fam. It's going to go over your head. And then he goes back into the hook. This is this is just such good writing. Our losses, we bounce back when we take losses. I pray we all get prayed for. I pray we all could make more. To OGs and young bosses, 
we bounce back when we take losses. I pray we all get prayed for. I pray we all can make more. or analysis breakdown if you will of Nas is sitting with my thoughts yo I'm asking y'all subscribe give me some likes I'm trying to grow this channel you know what I'm saying I'm I'm coming at this from a academic literary artistic standpoint you know what I'm saying it's not about the tea or or anything salacious you know what I'm saying it's about bar structure it's relating bars to literature and academia, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, hit the like button, give me a subscribe, fam, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not out here doing some crazy shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just looking to, to elevate the conversation and the discourse, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm just here to elevate the conversation and the discourse. Okay, this part I should put at the front. All right, fam, hit the like button, give me a subscription, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to break down bars and relate them to literature and artistic expression and academia. It's nothing salacious. I'm not out here doing some crazy shit. Uh, help your boy grow this channel. You know what I'm saying? Hit like, subscribe, help me blow this thing up, man. You know what I'm saying? I wanna have more time to Elevate the discourse and delve into these bars. <laughs>